Let's take a look at some of the hogs at the Trump trial. Thank God, dude, for giving us some goddamn content. Fund the district attorney in order to bring this case. There's no underlying felony. Oh, there she is. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Loomer. I'm going to give you five bucks here. It's, it's a hush, uh, it's a hush hey, money here, payment. Here's, 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 if you can just leave. Here, here's the deal, my go. friends. That, that has nothing to do with it. So we are here in lower Manhattan outside the courthouse where Donald Trump is set to appear today uh, for the first day of jury selection for the Stormy Daniels hush money case. That's right. Uh, behind us, you can see about maybe 10 uh, to 15 Trump supporters, uh, about 50 members of the media. So the media is really showing out today. Donald Trump uh, at the speech in Allentown, he said he wanted people to be there, show their support. And it looks like the people that came were about, yeah, like you said, 15 people and yeah. uh, Laura Loomer screaming at the top of her lungs correct, in a bullhorn. Yeah. Apparently a few days ago also he said to stand back and stand by. Um, you know, a call back to what he said uh, to the Proud Boys right. at one point. But I think I people think have stood didn't back. actually say stand back and stand by. I think he did. Did he really? Well, we'll look it up. We'll look it we'll up. Throw that clip in here. Okay. If he did, but I think either way, I tweeted think... it saying this is exactly this is what they're saying here. Because this is the implication. Well, the implication yeah. seems to have kept people way back, so far back that they didn't even show up. They didn't show up. Yeah. They didn't show up. And it, when you look at it, and you see that there's like, you know, lots of Trump supporters. You should also keep in mind that uh, I would say like probably 15 percent of those Trump supporters, those 15 people. Maybe twenty percent are people pretending to be Trump supporters right. who are like wearing Trump hats and and but so, they're, they're just kind of like correct doing funny videos. So and of that, like that fifteen, you got to subtract. Got to subtract three or, four. three or four of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do, we do know a lot of the people here. We know Brian Glenn from uh, Right Side Broadcasting. He was over right. interviewing some people. We know the the Jews control everything, guy. Oh yeah, Peter. Look over here. There he is Peter. in a ski mask over there. He's got a giant sign. Do uh, you see him with the, the cross? He's got a white hoodie with a cross around his neck, a giant crucifix. And he's the guy that DeVram talked to who said Jews. I don't get it. If you think Jews control everything, like, don't you want Jews to control everything so they can have Israel and stuff? If you're a Christian, kind of seems like a phony Christian to me. Or maybe he's a Catholic. I don't know. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. If you're like riding for Christianity, who do you think are the biggest supporters of, of Israel? It's Christians. You know, it's odd bit of a fake evangelical to me, coming across like a fake evangelical to me control everything right you think jews control the country yeah they, they control the country oh interesting they control wall street they control the banks they control hollywood every building in new york city is owned by jews hey, hey. I, i'm jewish I'm hey, you gotta get out of here I, no I control everything you gotta go I'm not going <laughs> no you gotta go i'm jewish I, but I control everything, oh, so you, control you gotta, you gotta go. Movement. I'm just saying it. it uh, so there you have it. Jews control everything. I was. Oh my God! He proved his point. He proved his point. What the? Able to to clear the square there. I just commanded him to leave, and he left. Well, it's true what they say. Jews control everything. Devram's a Jew, and crazy. Take care of that. Yep. In his defense, Devram. I did control him. You did him control right him, after. and you are Jewish. And that was that was. I'm not gonna say my bad. I don't regret it, but I. It was unfortunate to confirm some of his stereotypes. Right. It was an unfortunate moment, but he did clear the area, <laughs> and so uh, as a Jew, I was I was grateful for that. Yeah. Wait, you think that guy? You think that guy genuinely was afraid? Like he, because because it's such a stupid idea. I sometimes forget that like some people are sincere in their beliefs. So it is so far beyond anything that I can recognize internally that I always immediately think, oh, it's a cynical grifter just saying this. And I forget that like, oh no, like he might legitimately think this Jewish man does actually exert some sense of authority over him where in a weird way, his like anti-Semitism causes him to like be genuinely afraid. That's kind of funny as like he, he like he's a real one he, he is a real one he's like no you are jewish i am scared actually please please do not show me your tail and horns <laughs> i will leave <laughs> that's awesome yeah i mean my power. with great power comes great responsibility yep. though and i i 
also see that you're you haven't used your power to get everybody else out of here you believe in no, free speech and things like that i believe in free speech also you know i want to see what happens right it's it's a little boring to just uh snap my fingers and clear clear the area so we're gonna wait on that all right so we're here uh in the section of the park that has all the trump supporters in most of the people here are media uh, or trolls who are right. just here or to, people who live or work just in here the to area prank people thought this is yeah. weird i'll check it out uh, right over here is the Jews Control Everything guy. He's the guy uh, Deram talked to a couple, I guess it was a year ago. Jews versus TikTok? What? Uh, I don't know if they're, the Jews are winning or not. I don't know what the implication of that you sign keep, is. You don't, you don't get like a scorecard every night on what's going on with the, your It's like it goes to spam. Oh, it goes to spam. It goes to spam. Okay. Um, so I will check on that. I don't know if the Jews versus TikTok, uh, who's, who's... It's funny to th I am not Googling that yet, no. It is funny to think that, like, this guy is so stupid. Again, I, I, I assume this freak, anti-Semitic, psycho thinks that, like, the ADL represents uh, the Jewish interest. But it is funny that he's, like, leading people astray, even though internally his, his goal is to, like, educate the public. <laughs> but he ends up, like, misinforming people. I'm not a fan of the double-sided sign. I think you get only one side and that's it. I agree. It's because most TikTokers are pro-Palestine. That's probably his thought process. Yeah, which is funny because, like, who do you think half of the pro-Palestinian uh, advocates are on there? What, what background do you think they are? It's Jewish Zoomers as well as every other kind of Zoomer. This guy was not anti-Semite of the week, by the way. Yeah, well, you know, obviously... Stop anti-Semitism has uh, more important things to fight against, which is me uh, being anti-Semite of the week. Who's winning there? So, <laughs> what's the sign say here? What's the sign say here? Jews versus TikTok. Bro, you have a cross that big, it's Jover. Okay, you have a you have a cross that big, is so is so Jover. Jews versus TikTok. What does that mean? Jewish groups are trying to get TikTok banned, and they're using Congress to do it under a false pretense. You think Jew Jewish people are just getting rid of TikTok? They're really? Doing their best. Look really? it up. They admit it. They, every mate, the ADL. TikTok's gone. It's off the yeah. app store. Well, that's what you guys I'm want. Jewish. That's what you guys yes. want. Feels good. So, All right, there you have it. Google it and read it. Google Jews really do control everything. Some Trump supporters with very big flags, but for every single Trump supporter, there's probably about three people from the media there. Um, so it's it's a it's a pretty exciting scene. The, the last time we were here, there was a woman. I guess it was right when he came in to be arraigned. There was a woman who was trying to stomp. On Once again, I must repeat something very important, which is that the number one, the largest group of donors to APAC. The, uh, the, the thing that this guy thinks is like, uh, representing Jewish interests are not actually Jewish Americans. They're Christians, which is why I find it always so strange when someone who's rocking a, f when someone who is rocking that fat cross is just like, yeah, that's right. Jews want to ban TikTok. Look it up. It's like, really? I, uh, <laughs> Can't believe how many Jewish people are in uh, an evangelical church in Dallas, Texas. You'd be shocked. The cross passes the fit check. Yeah, he's opium, actually. On an anti-Trump flag. Right. And then she fell over. She I think it was right fell here. fell over it. She fell over. Hey! Are you okay? I saw yeah. a video. You, you okay, fell baby? down. Are you okay? Wait, you fell on the ground. On. Don't talk about Christian, you pig. Wait, why? I mean... I don't think that like televangelists in the South represent Christianity, but uh, if you're going to get butthurt about them and think that they do represent Christianity well, then I, you know, oops, cry about it, I guess. On, right? I, I think I fell, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Are you okay? It was a nasty tumble. Yeah, it was a moment in which she was showing her support, but she didn't have enough support of her own. Very well tumbled said. Tumbled down. Yeah. Uh, but some people don't know what this trial is actually about. People are calling it Stormy Daniels hush money. That's true. But also there was a story about another affair. There was a story about Donald Trump potentially having fathered a child with 
someone who uh, worked at Trump Tower. Yeah, right? yeah. In the, um, the catch and kills for the National Enquirer. That's the, right. Yeah. So it was about paying to stop stories from getting out, uh, and then hiding those payments from from the the authorities. Right, because so, it was a campaign payment. Right. Is, is the so people are saying, saying right? uh, trying to kind of reclassify this to people as an election interference case, uh, but it seems more like a, you should be able to pay people off before an election case. Trying to see with the circus here. Oh man, this is fantastic. <laughs> you're, you're excited about today? Oh, extremely. Why? I just think it's, uh, you know, it's good for the country to see a Great question, like Summer this. Breeze. Why is it so far-fetched to believe Jews control everything based on everything that's going on with the war and people being canceled and losing everything merely on criticizing Jews or Israel? Well, let me tell you, as anti-Semite of the week, let me explain to you why that is an incredibly stupid idea, okay? Support for Israel is not about support for Judaism. Israel does not represent the interests of Jews. As a matter of fact, Jewish support in the United States of America for Palestinians actually is nearly identical to the rest of the country. Once you go under the age of 35, support for Palestinians amongst the Jewish population in the United States of America is also aligned with the rest of the country. The percentages are nearly identical. There are many Jews in this chat, as a matter of fact, who are socialist and anti-Zionists, okay? As the award winner for Anti-Semite of the Week, let me explain to you some facts. America's interest in Israel is not about Judaism at all, or Jewish people at all. America's interest in Israel is that Israel is a forward operating base or an unsinkable aircraft carrier for United States interests in a region that is very resource rich, okay? If Israel was built as a settler colonial state that was comprised not of Jews, but of, I don't know, Christians, they would be supporting it all the same, maybe even more than they support Israel, even though, I mean, it's pretty hard to support Israel more than they currently do. As far as support for Israel goes, there are significantly more people, 10x more people in this country that unconditionally offer support to Israel and fund Israeli settlement initiatives in the South amongst evangelical Protestants due to it, their own understanding of theology, okay? Due to their own understanding of theology that if the chosen sons and daughters of God control Israel, the holy land for them, then Jesus Christ is going to come back to earth the rapture is going to happen. He is going to duke it out with the devil in Megiddo. That psychopathic anime style theological understanding of the rapture happening and the second coming of Jesus Christ happening is the major underpinning and the major reason for why there is more support for Israel amongst evangelical Protestants in this country than there is amongst American Jews. Donald Trump has actually made history because this is the first time when a former US president has gone to a criminal trial. This case will also have significant consequences as Trump will be competing against Joe Biden for the presidency. This specific trial is related to the hush money payments to an adult film actress before the 2016 election. Hush money payments are actually not illegal, but Trump is accused of falsifying business records to keep unflattering information that could have hurt his campaign from the voters in an allegedly early example of election interference. According to many experts, this case will have less of a political significance compared to the other three Trump cases. As this case is related to Trump's alleged personal conduct, while the other three cases are rooted in the powers of the presidency, which are rooted in greater constitutional and legal concerns. But Trump and his lawyers have successfully delayed those cases, which are related to the overturning the 2020 elections and holding of classified documents. So those cases will happen on a later date. Now, you might not know this, but Jewish people, there are not that many of them. For multiple reasons, one of which being that uh, Judaism does not proselytize or evangelize in the same way that Islam and definitely Christianity does. And then also, uh, obviously, the Holocaust and, you know, centuries of pogroms that Jewish people have withstood kind of uh, played a big role in cutting the numbers down. Okay, so obviously, 
Jewish people, even if they wanted to, could not really mount a serious support for Israel in the same way that American Christians can. I don't understand how you're writing a paper, and this was your basis, by the way. Holy I'm glad that you didn't write the paper with this attitude, because I think your teacher would probably be very correct in stating that you are anti-Semitic. This is a very anti-Semitic tendency that you should move away from, that the fact that Jews control the world or whatever is uh, definitely, uh, you know, Nazi propaganda. And was Nazi prop? Yeah, he's writing a paper. He's writing Mein Kampf too. <laughs> it's on the state itself, not that they control everything. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, well, they Jewish people don't control everything. That's not correct at all. Also, one really important part of this process that you're forgetting is that they is monolithic thinking. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Jewish people are not a monolith. Like they're not operating on a single hive mind. That's not a thing. They're, they're just normal human beings, just like you and I, you know, in the words of, in the words of John McCain, <laughs> they're not Arab. They're good people. <laughs> they're good. Okay. Anyway. All right. John McCain did say that about Barack Obama once. Okay. Gotta ban you. Weirdo. Oh, you're anti Semite. The Weeg article has zero likes. Yeah, it's kind of fed up. So now that we established that American, the American foreign policy interest in Israel has nothing to do with Judaism and everything to do with America's interest in the region, I hope you understand that unconditional support to Israel has nothing to do with Jewish people as a whole. American support for Israeli activities also doesn't necessarily come from American Jews as much as it comes from American evangelical Protestant Christians. Okay? Just something to remember. Now... This doesn't mean that there aren't ultra Zionist Jewish people in positions of power. Of course there are, but they are not the movement builders here. The overarching interest of America, the American state department, that is the major factor. If tomorrow every single Jewish ultra Zionist, ultra nationalist person decided magically to no longer be in support of Israel, do you think that America would stop defending Israel? That is the question you must ask yourself. Because if you truly believe that, well, then you're a silly person. Okay? That would not stop America from defending Israel. If every single American Jew that was in a position of power that went from being ultra-Zionist to anti-Zionist tomorrow, do you really think America would stop defending Israel? Because they would not. Jewish people are not a monolithic culture like all religious, cultural, and political groups, but you do use they for groups you don't like. Explain to me what groups I don't like very quickly. And you can't say Christian because I, I defend uh, those of the Christian faith as well, but I do talk about hogs. Go ahead. Unless you mean conservatives. Ooh, interesting. Conservatism. A mindset. An attitude. A way of thinking. Is it a way of existence? No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, if it was a way of existence, I would be the number one genocide conservatives because there is a ton of people who used to be conservative who are no longer not conservative. So am I actually killing conservatives when I change their minds? Is that what's going on? Or are they no longer becoming conservative? Do you think conservatism is a race? Or do you think it's a way of thinking that I think is bad? Okay, we'll continue. Uh, well, I'm going to table this uh, discussion, but let's move on. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. We're in a free society and we can... What is happening with the audio levels in this goddamn video? They go up and like down this, so crazy. All the news coverage just shows that we're the freest place in America. I'm sensing a little sarcasm from you. Maybe a little. A little. Are you upset about the, the trial? Um, I'm not happy about it. I don't think it should have ever happen. Why, why is that? Uh, because I think it's all made up. In Trumped up, no pun intended. Which in, in what, what, what part, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alvin Bragg, that part. You think he's you not think real? He's not a real person? Or? I think he's doing this totally for political purposes. He's being indicted on a misdemeanor that's past the statute of limitations, but Fat Alvin Bragg... Uh, 
Could you call him? I was not expecting that guy to get that. Give me that take, by the way. <sighs> Damn, bro. This dude literally was like, I think I just broke him. I don't think he's. I think he's changing his his username from can't be swayed to I am now swayed because I feel like I just because I, I feel like he's no longer conservative. Like he just had his mind broken here. <laughs> another day, another conservative decided who is no longer conservative and now reformed. His account was created 30 minutes ago. He's struggling. Yeah, well, it's crazy. They can be swayed. Actually, it turns out I'm going to assume that he was swayed. Said Alvin Bragg. F-A-T? Yes. Why, why are you calling him that? Well, he is, isn't he? What would you call Santa, though, if okay. you had to describe Santa? You, you're interrupting. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You asked. No, 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 no. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I, I have a little bit of trouble with um, the optics of it. I think people are not going to love that this feels like a, these, especially the moments that are in question are kind of private moments, they're affairs, or whether or not he's the father of a child. If they had been You're shady covering up business the dealings, exactly. So it's it's easy for supporters to write it off like it would be any other of his tax violations or okay. his. But you know, it, it seems like a a, rel, a a relatively small financial crime. I don't think it is, but I think that's what it's going to look like, and I think it's the only one that's going to actually affect whether or not he's convicted of anything before the election. So I think it's a not a strong one to lead with, in my well, opinion. Well, there are some people, like we said before, there's like protesters here for Donald Trump. And a couple minutes ago, the Laura Loomer and some of her friends, the super friends, of right. Laura Loomer, the loud, loud, super loud friends, group, they were giving a, a press conference, which was that her yelling in a bullhorn. And then I was going to say, that's a press conference nowadays. I Things guess have so. changed. Yeah. It's just the lady with a bullhorn screaming so loud. Now, now the Jews control everything, guys. Even a press conference over here. <laughs> the media is all around him trying to see what he's say. But the... They were giving a, a, a press conference. Then Andrew Giuliani was right. there, and you, I, you, you were kind of getting a little annoyed by like how loud everything I was. I wanted him to hush a little bit, yeah. right? And I realized I looked in my pocket. I had a few bucks. Yeah, nice. I had a few dollars, so I figured I would give him a hush payment. Soros funded district attorney in order to bring this case. Excuse me. There's no underlying yeah. felony. I, I'm going to give you five bucks here. It's it's a hush. Uh, it's a hush hey, money here, payment. Here's, here's if, you the deal. Just, if you can just he, leave. Here's the deal, my go. friend. That, that has nothing to do with it, my here friend. What, what, what's the idea? Yeah, I'm, I'm giving idea? you a hush money. Okay. Hush money. Everyone got mad. They screamed more, so hush payments aren't as effective. Okay. As you want them to be. Uh, but I'm still going to keep sending money his way, and hopefully he'll take it. Just get the heck out of here. Well, I I don't know that the hush money uh, the hush payment hush money payment works with him because I went up and interviewed him after I didn't realize who I was talking to. Right. And I, I I asked him his name. I mean, we could show the video, but the the I asked him his name, and then I realized, oh my God, Giuliani, that's the same last name as the guy who did four you seasons. You put that total. together, right in the following moment. Following this stuff pretty closely, and you, that name was like yeah. ding ding ding. You remembered it in the in the moment. Uh, do you mind if I just get your uh, your first and last name? Sure. Who uh, are you guys with? Uh, we're, uh, Jason Selva with TGL here. TGL, okay. Andrew Giuliani. A Andrew Giuli Giuliani. Yes. Giuliani. That's the last name of the 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 guy who was at Total Landscaping, right? Four uh, seasons for oh, Total Landscaping. Former mayor. Of former mayor. Oh. New York. Yeah, America's mayor. That's right. Yeah. The the guy who. Oh my God, he kind of sounds like him. Ah, oh, former mayor. Oh, dude, that's crazy. They found his son, dude. How are they so... Bro, the, I'm, I'm not big into eugenics, but goddamn, this bloodline has to end at him. Why are they so ghoulish? Why do they look so freakish, dude? The new variant is also just as ghoulish as the old one. Somehow even more ghoulish. Oh my God! He did date his cousin. Is that why? Yeah. Who was oh, was on, on was on national uh, national television sweating? One second. We're hair dye. Going. We're gonna keep going. Uh, hey, would you do me a favor? Would you record this interview? You got it. Awesome. Please, please Thank do. you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. So your your father was the guy who was who was sweating hair dye on okay, on funny guy. So you like you like seeing our country just fall apart? Is that what you like there, what? funny guy? I, I'm just I'm asking you a question. Could you just give me? He's like, yeah. Come on, I'm gonna own you now. That's right, TGL. I love when they always ask, like, what outlet are you from? To just, like, make a quick snapshot judgment on, like, whether they're woke or not. Awesome. Give me a yes or no. I, I, was I, was I, your I, dad... I'm, was I'm, your I'm asking you a question. You like seeing our country fall apart, yes or no? Was your dad... You like seeing our country fall apart the way it is? 
Was your you dad? Like what's going on at the? Uh, have you been up to the Roosevelt Hotel recently? Have just, you seen that there, buddy? I'm just wondering why you I'm, can't I'm answer. You, you can't, can't answer, answer one question. Why simple can't you question. Answer the question? I you asked come you out a with simple New Yorkers, question. You got to deal with the New York question. You can't I, deal I with it. I asked you a simple is question. Is that the deal? You can't. Was deal your father the guy who is sweating I, I hair dye? I asked you a question. Do you like seeing our country fall apart? It's a yes. It's a yes or And you can't answer. All right. So that was the guy whose dad was sweating hair dye while spreading election lies after the 2020 election. Uh, he couldn't answer a simple question, yes or no question, and that's just the state of America right now. Some people, they want to be in positions of leadership, but they can't answer a yes or no question. I think that's why this country's in the shape that it is right now. He would not give a yes or no answer to that question. He was evading it. So as a journalist, do you think the answer was yes or no? I know you don't want to add your uh, editorialize here too I much. I think there are, I think that it, this, th their facts matter, and like right. this is a yes or no situation. Like. Yes, Rudy Giuliani did sweat hair dye after the 2020 election. When you say there's no evidence. And, but he would not. Yes, he didn't it. intend to book the Four Seasons. I wish they did more with that guy, him and his dad. Oh, you know that kid was busted, dude, from the jump. You see a kid with that haircut looking like that? You already know. Just, his future prospects were cut short from the jump. You know, it's not his fault. Resort. Yes. Ended up booking the Four Seasons Total Landscaping. Um, of course, that was right next to a shop and a crematorium. Yeah. Um, I don't think that could have been intentional, although it was maybe the best thing to ever Ever best, happen. De definitely the best thing that ever happened in the state of Pennsylvania. I don't know, if, like, ever, but definitely in the state of Pennsylvania. Right, right. And certainly in this, the city of Philadelphia, that's for Is sure. there more? Uh, so those, those are... All right. Well, that's the good liars chat. The United States, in contrast to historically less stable democracies, has not typically seen its former heads of state face trial. However, the current circumstances surrounding Trump's legal entanglements are unprecedented. This situation sets a new precedent potentially making it less surprising for future presidents to be subjected to legal scrutiny. Trump has already talked about locking up political enemies if he returns to White House, saying that he would have no choice but to lock up opponents because they are doing it to us. The departure from the norms is concerning, reflecting the broader challenges Trump poses to the US institutions, both political and constitution. Trump's divisive personality deliberately creates a constant turmoil, making it difficult for Americans to fully grasp the significance of each boundary crossed. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching.